Trial of Allegiance is out. It's a country pride that adds new focuses for a bunch of nations in South America. South, South America to be specific. And as you can see by the review, it's mostly negative. I thought I'd just blast out a list of things that I would have done differently if I released this expansion that would hopefully make the community more happy with this said release. First thing I'm gonna say is the list of things I'm gonna come out with here are gonna be ranked based upon roughly how easy these could have been done or how close to impossible and hard they may be. It'll make more sense when I go along. Anyway, let's start off from the top. Don't make meme paths achievements. You know about it and you probably know about it because it's an achievement so how can you not know about it which takes away the mystery it takes away the memory and takes away kind of how special it is when it's just simply an achievement somehow he has returned as argentina have senor hilta become the country's leader i realized that it says the actual description to achieve it is senor hilta but it actually says here senor hitler one of them is a spelling error one of them is not. You choose which is which. So you remember when you find out about the HRE as Germany, as that was a, a path you could go down. It, there was an achievement. It was hidden in the code. And then a new YouTuber revealed it as their first video by digging into the game files, which was kind of sad because it, it would have been nice if it was discovered later on. And then, of course, Poland as well. You, there's the, the fourth monarchist path, which once again, the community didn't find about until several weeks after the release of the expansion, which was kind of cool too. And the beauty of these mysterious achievements, these meme paths, was that they weren't available to the community immediately. And we didn't know about it because they weren't an actual achievement. Having this be visible to us from the very beginning, this kind of ruins some of the mystery. And I guess I'm not really for this. It's, I guess the equivalent would be... The joke, may the fork be with you, and then making the actual joke in a Star Wars movie. And it's like, wow, the joke wasn't very big to begin with, but then you've kind of made the joke deliberately in a movie that we can see it now. The meme is now dead because you have ruined it by making it mainstream. So once again, I'm not against this path. I like that it's in the game. And I like that it's kind of a little bit tricky to get. And you have some cool content associated with it when you do actually fully go the fascist path as Argentina. But the mystery's gone when you reveal it to the player immediately. In an achievement my biggest concern with some of the focus paths for the south south american nations is they all have very similar outcomes i'll show you so the bottom of the chili path here is for instance here unify hispanic america which allows you to call the entirety of south america and then as brazil you've got the ability to unify south america and call the entirety of south america and then as Argentina, you've got the ability to unify South America and call the entirety of South America. And then it takes it a step further with the small focus trees, the minor focus trees. You've got the ability here, the stuff of legends, to annex South America and call the entirety of South America. I'll say this. I'm not against this. I think this is a cool ability. And trust me, conquering and coring stuff in Hoi 4 is super fun. The only problem is, is the kind of having the exact same result on the bottom of the focus trees for all of these nations, I feel like isn't very creative. And I feel like they could have put a spin on it. Maybe certain regions had to be cored. You had to make a decision which ones were going to be cored. Is it the north or the south? Is it the Portuguese side or is it the Spanish side? Maybe some of them will cause certain regions, but then other halves will be, for instance, created as a big puppet state, for instance. I kind of feel like it leaves a sour taste in the player's mouth when it kind of looks like each of the focus trees have something in common that looks like they're copied from one another. And that's not a far-flung statement because they all do share this military path as well. So there are quite a lot of um, copied content, a lot of synergy between the different focus trees that a lot of them do share. So I guess that there's a there's a feeling from the players that, well, I'm buying this expansion, but I'm not really getting five focus trees. I'm kind of getting one that's heavily modified for three different major powers and then a few minor tweaks for some of the minor focus trees. I can't help but feel a little bit like sour when the content isn't 100% fresh. And I don't think it needs to be 100% fresh. I just think that each individual path, particularly the very bomb, which has the best reward, which I am definitely thankful for that this, this amazing outcome is at the bottom of the focus tree. But it'd be kind of cool if just each individual nation had a different spin on it. For instance, I don't know, Brazil, for instance, could only call, let's say, Paraguay, Uruguay, uh, and Bolivia. And all the other coastal nations had to be made as puppets, for instance. I suppose that forms kind of like a greater Brazil, I suppose. Where Argentina, for instance, can call all of the Spanish parts, as well as Brazil. 
And then maybe Chile has a really awesome ability where it can call only the coastal nations. So basically all of the Pacific ones, but not the Atlantic ones, for instance. Just, just add a little bit of flavor, mix it up a little bit and just give us something a little bit different. Just to backtrack a little bit though, I do think the Chili Path is the most creative focus tree out of the three new major ones. There are some unbelievably cool things you could do, like coring France. I suppose you can do that as Argentina if you go for the Hitler Path. But then you've also got the ability to release the indigenous states and then unify them and call the entirety of North and South America. You could argue that that's kind of the same thing again, but it's just a little bit different. It doesn't have to be massively different. They don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's just, once again, if you're coring different regions for different nations, it just has a little bit extra bit of flavor. A little bit of salt, a little bit of spice. Everything tastes just a little bit different. And once again, this is good for the player because if you play it again, you're going to get a completely different experience. And it's not just going to be, oh, look, I'm unifying South America again. Yay. Next up. Make it crystal clear, this is only the half of South America. So in a lot of the advertising and the trailers, they basically said, finally, the South American focus trees are finally here. It did not make me feel, if I'd not read the dev diaries, that I wouldn't really know what actually to expect. And I think there was an expectation of the community that this was going to be the entirety of South America because it was the nation that everyone had forgotten about. It turns out it was only South South America and not North South America. If you know, you know. I do think the entirety of South America to have a completely creative new focus trees for each individual nation is borderline impossible. So I understand from Paradox's perspective, that's not doable. But what should have been crystal clear is this is a specific country pack for half of South America. I know that doesn't sound as sexy for advertising, but the marketing department could have come up with something that doesn't leave a sour taste in people's mouths and makes them feel like I've not really got the full South America experience. I've only got half of it. Now they did later on paradox they did rename it to a country pack instead of an expansion pack and they've kind of categorized them to two categories now kind of full-blown dlcs and country packs the other country pack being the battle of the bosporus which on a side note are not my favorite focus trees but there's some insane creativity with these two focus trees like be able to form like a sparta greece and byzantium turkey can revert back to the ottomans and form a turkic nation that can call central america and bulgaria having this insane ability to unify the balkans which are all creative they're all different sure there's a little of overlap but they're all different outcomes they're not just uni unify south america that would be strange wouldn't it bulgaria unifying south america that would be a little bit strange it'd be very creative though i'll give it that i'd love to see the whole history behind that in short make it crystal clear this is south south america and not the entirety of south america One looming issue with the last two, potentially three expansions for Hoi has been power creep, which in short just means the new focus trees have features that are significantly more OP than some of the older features, meaning you have some insane potential for Finland to dominate Europe, where for instance, Germany, which was meant to be the main player of World War II, seems significantly weak focus tree wise in comparison, which if you not realize or not, a lot of the focuses for South South America were unbelievably nerfed. The biggest example is the Spirit of the Conquistadors, which is this one, which gave a juicy 20% extra attack, which I did think at the time was very high. However, just nerfing it just left a sour taste in our mouth. Remember, they want us to buy this expansion, but at the same time, you kind of feel like you get a little bit less for your money now because the focuses that were strong and OP and made you feel powerful playing these nations are no longer as OP. I do think power creep is a real thing though, and I don't think it's something we should ignore. And my two quick solutions that could have made players a little bit happy about that decision, with one, allow these national spirits to expire. So for instance, this spirit is really OP, but having it for the rest of the game is just too strong. 20% attack for the entirety of the game is just way too much. Have it last two years, and maybe have it as a way that the player can individually trigger it, and then when he triggers it, it'll last two years from that point on. So the player has control, but simultaneously we'll get to bonus of the reward. And then simultaneously at the same time, the OP bonus doesn't last forever. Also top it off as well, for instance, there's coring to return to that. The cost for coring is way unbelievably too cheap. It needs like a compliance re requirement. It needs to take instead of 30 days to core, it should take like 180 days and maybe it should cost 100 political power double triple the time and the cost to do these certain things and have a compliance minimum for instance 10 or 20 just something to make the player actually have to work for that said thing and not just let them call the whole world or south america in this case instantly and easily 
it will feel more rewarding to the player too if they have to work for something before they're just giving it on a silver platter and giving it for free. Okay, we're moving to the more difficult stuff now. The stuff that kind of feels like a more of a reach. So the next one, which is a popular reason for negative reviews for this expansion, is all of these South American nations don't have access to the fifth research slot, which kind of makes you feel like they never really want you to become a major power of these said nations. So it starts with two, which is unbelievably limiting. You need a minimum of three for your land forces. And then at least when you've got fourth, you've got flexibility to move into those other areas. However, the major powers in Hoi 4 have a minimum of five research slots. The reason why this one's more difficult is they don't want to give too much power to these regions and it could affect power creep once again. But the easy solution is make the requirement for the fifth research slot incredibly difficult to get to. And it's easy. All they have to do is go somewhere underneath, let's say the industry focus tree, have it down here requiring all these one, two, three, four, five. So it basically has a lot of requirements. You've got to do a lot of focuses to reach that point. And then it needs maybe more factories it would normally for the first research slot, which in this case will be like 100. So a minimum of 100 factories of any kind. And if you've called South America, you'll have 100. And then require you to have the vast majority of the industrial focuses already complete. Once again, you've got to work for it, but you are given a reward, eventually becoming a major power and having research that's comparable to the rest of the major powers in the world. You've got to jump through some hoops. Once again, it's important that we deal with power creep and not let it creep up on us. What well, do you see what I did there? This one is super tricky because Paradox have a plan. A lot of the time it's difficult to see because we can't see the big whiteboard with all the ideas all scribbled all over the place. But Paradox know what's coming and they've got a big plan in the long two, three years in the future of what features they're going to release. My proposal is this expansion for South America needed to have a new feature. It didn't have to be a biggie, but I feel like it needs a feature that's independent of itself that can affect all the nations in the world without needing to radically change all the focuses in the world. And the best example that I can think of that just pops into my head is an armored car designer. You know it's missing from the game. We know it's coming because the lead developer has made a note of it in one of the dev diaries. So we know it's coming. Why not just give us it as a part of an expansion? Armored cars, for the most part, are kind of a smaller, minor part of Hoi 4. They do have a use when it comes down to recon, as well as uh, using them for garrison templates. But for the most part, they're kind of one of those opt-out kind of things, and you can kind of avoid and go through a whole game of Hoi, and many different games of Hoi, without completely ignoring them. So surely this is a minor element that won't affect the balance of the game overall. I will say a bit, however, though, I think we're going to see a truck designer, armored car designer, and a mechanized designer all is one a bit kind of like with planes where the first module affects what the definition of the vehicle is whether it's armored car mechanized or motorized so that's probably the reason why this isn't going to be a part of a minor feature it's going to be part of a major feature of a future expansion maybe this year maybe next year i'm not certain but that's the reason why i lean back at the big picture and i go hmm i wonder what the big whiteboard at paradox dev says what does it say for the future of hoi 4 you know another minor feature that wouldn't make a fundamental difference to the overall game is adding the ability to design trains. Now, I can see from my perspective that the, the audience for this might be a little bit upset. I can see I can see the reviews now saying, train design in South America, who asked for this? I, I know, I know, I, I probably I would feel kind of a similar way. But once again, it's giving just a one feature that doesn't throw off the fundamental balance of the entire game and all the past content and focus trees. Something relatively small that can make the DLC feel worthwhile and make you want to opt into this DLC to take advantage of it. For instance, when I play Poland, I'll play as a Czechoslovakia, I'll play as Yugoslavia. I think this is the biggest disappointment with this expansion because I can play as any other nation in the world. And I'm like, do you know what? The experience is no different. It is practically the same experience with or without the South American expansions. Hence the reason why they call them country packs. Last and definitely not least is the biggie, guys. Are you ready for this? This is the one that is probably the least likely to ever, ever change. But we're going to hit it on the head, and it's probably the number one reason this expansion has got negative reviews. And this is it. That's it. I think depending on the place that you live in the world, and depending on your strength of your local currency compared to the dollar, I think this expansion was around $15. I could be wrong on this one. But the, the overwhelming consensus of reviews for this expansion is the price is too 
damn high. And I think compared to all previous expansions that we've had for Hoy, I think this one has probably given us the least bang for our buck. Because at least Turkey, Bulgaria, and Greece, these nations were fundamental parts of World War II. They saw significant action, maybe minus Turkey. So they kind of felt like a, an essential puzzle piece as a part of Hearts of Iron 4. But with South America being so far away from the action, it just kind of just feels like, well, if they're not there, what difference does it make? And I think that's kind of the attitude of this expansion, isn't it? It's so far away. It's so not intertwined with World War II. Why should I care? And I think because of that, the price is just too high. And I think the price needs to come down to $9.99. $9.99. So the reason why this is one is like moving mountains impossible due to like the average price for a DLC, they're trying to be competitive to other expansions for other Paradox games as well as probably other software developers out there as well. So the minimum threshold for their DLC pricing is going to be $14.99. And I don't think they're ever going to come below that unless it's for some kind of cosmetic stuff, not actual content like this is. But once again, from a bureaucratic paradox interactive standpoint the reason people are annoyed is because it is too damn high and you know what hand on heart for what you get for this expansion and based on all the previous things i mentioned before i think i actually agree with them i personally if i was choosing between battle for the bosphorus and trial of allegiance i think i'd go for battle for the bosphorus surprisingly the reviews are mixed this has not got slated compared to the new expansion even though the content is very similar once again go back to what i previously said it's more to do with the area of the world and how this nation or how these nations intertwine more with world war ii where south america is just like they're just over there you know they're over there doing their own thing you know unless they want to get involved they can if they want to by unifying south america boom tell me in the comments below what would be the thing that they would need to change for you to buy this expansion just say it and feel free, if there's anything I've missed, please let me know in the comments below and let me know what would push you over the line. You want more of this kind of content? Hey, give this one a click right here. This one.